Hi, I'm Adam Lane Smith, Attachment Specialist, and today I want to talk to you about how men form bonds, because it's typically very different from how women form bonds, but in our society we're taught that men should bond the same way. It's not true. To get there today, I'm going to have to talk to you about a couple of different hormones in your body. Number one you might be familiar with, it's called oxytocin. Now, oxytocin is what bonds you to other people when you feel comfortable. Sometimes it's called while being immobile, without fear, while being at rest. Oxytocin is what makes you bond to other people in good situations, when you're happy, when you're hugging, when you're holding hands, when you're snuggling under a blanket, when you're enjoying a cup of tea, when you're on a quiet walk together. Oxytocin is what bonds you to make you feel close to other people. The other hormone that we need to talk about is called vasopressin. It bonds people during times of stress. It bonds you when you are solving problems together, when you are overcoming challenges together, and when you endure trials together. Vasopressin bonds, I don't want to say they're stronger, but they're a little bit more primal. It turns out that vasopressin bonds and their receptors have been present in not just humans, but in our genetic ancestors actually before the time when mammals started to lactate. Oxytocin is built a lot more around lactation. Um, or at least it entered our, our species during that time, or, or even our genetic ancestors during that time. Oxytocin moves a lot of milk. It has a lot to do with female reproductive systems and female feeding systems. Um, vasopressin is older, much older. It's much more primal. What does vasopressin bonding look like? So when men go to war <laughs> and start fighting and killing and surviving together, they experience vasopressin bonding. This is why movies like Band of Brothers... Uh, Saving Private Ryan, even if they hate each other, even if they despise each other at the start, they start forming lifelong bonds that they don't want to be apart from each other ever again, and they will connect all the way up until all of them are 90 years old, as you see with some World War II veterans. This is why. It's vasopressin bonding. It is solving problems together, and the science shows that vasopressin exists in men in much higher levels than it does in women. Vasopressin bonds us to other people. It's a choice to introduce that stress sometimes, but vasopressin makes you bond to other people as you solve problems together. Oxytocin, I don't want to say it's the female hormone because it's not, both get it, but oxytocin is much bigger in bonding for females. During birth, during natural vaginal birth, um, a large dose of oxytocin floods the female system so that she instantly bonds to that baby. If you've experienced or if you've heard of prior to birth, the, the mother tries to give the baby up for adoption. Everything rolls through. They've got the parents on board, the new parents, the adopted parents, and she's just about to give birth and is ready to give the baby up. And then she gives birth and cannot let that baby go ever. And the adoption collapses. This is why. It's the huge oxytocin bond at first. They do first feeding. Uh, oxytocin floods her system and creates more milk production and pushes the milk out. The baby drinks it. She is basically, basically, while breastfeeding, moms sit there in almost a drug-induced haze looking at their baby thinking, I love this baby so much, typically. Um, that is oxytocin. If you hug somebody, you release oxytocin and endorphins. Uh, oxytocin comes from a variety of good things. Men, though, we tend to be much more active. Acting in stressful environments, good or bad stress, creates more of a vasopressin bond. That is how men tend to bond. And this is why so many fathers with newborns feel uncomfortable and sad because they do not feel as bonded to their newborn as the mom does. The mom has this incredible oxytocin flood going on at 20, you know, all the time. Every two hours you have to feed the baby oxytocin, oxytocin, oxytocin. And that's great. Men don't get that because we're not breastfeeding that baby. We didn't give birth to the baby. We are not getting those oxytocin bonds. We might when we hold the child, depending on our own oxytocin states. If we had grew up with healthy oxytocin, that's a whole different story. If we grew up with healthy, healthy oxytocin, we may hold our child and say, well, this is my wonderful child. I love this child and get some oxytocin bonding, not to the level that the mom does. Many first time young fathers are uncomfortable and secretly sad that they don't have that bond and they worry with their newborn. Why don't I feel as close to that baby as the mom does? Men tend to bond through small levels of stress, problem solving. When the child is a little bit older and the child has problems and the father can teach them 
Men bond through teaching. You have a problem. I have the solution. Let me share it with you. And they vasopress and bond through that. They vasopress and bond through throwing a football back and forth because there's a little bit of stress about running and catching, maybe a little bit of competition. Men bond also through competition. Men bond through wrestling and fighting through the stress levels that are in there. You get physiologically aroused like you would be fighting with stress, but it's good stress. That's wonderful. Men vasopress and bond um, through sex, interestingly. So when a woman experiences an orgasm, she gets a flood of oxytocin like she does at birth, like she does during breastfeeding. And she looks at her husband or, or male partner and thinks, wow, he's so wonderful and wants to snuggle and cuddle with him and deepen that oxytocin bond. Men get a little bit of oxytocin at orgasm, but the, the role of the oxytocin appears to be moving the semen <laughs> more than bonding you to the other person. So you might get a little bit. Mostly what men get is dopamine. So they release they have say they they have the orgasm, they ejaculate, they experience dopamine rush and think, wow, she is really great for relieving my sexual needs. <laughs> That's very different from I love this woman so much. That's why men tend to go to sleep. They get hungry. They want to just they don't. They, why do you want to cuddle after sex? I'm hot and sweaty. They don't want to do anything. It's because they didn't release that vasopressin bond. However, however, during that sexual encounter, if there are elements of stress, good stress of solving problems together if she is having trouble achieving orgasm if he is trying really hard to make her happy in a certain way if they are doing something new together if they're more adventurous if they're more fun that releases light stress which can create vasopressin bonding as you solve problems together it's a team building exercise hey great um that is why men tend to vasopressin bond more with women who are actively engaged in those sexual activities that's why some women know that, and some women use that, and that vasopressin bonds men to them. Vasopressin bonds, now that you understand them, this is how men bond. So if you want to feel closer to somebody, you have to create a team-building exercise in some way. Sitting and holding their hand will probably not do it as much for most men as getting up and building a pine wood derby box. We all grew up hearing at least stories about that activity fathers and sons used to do. Going camping together and building the fire up, building something together, learning a hobby together, solving problems together, doing challenges together, playing competitive games together, or cooperative games where you play against another team. Team building challenges, team building exercises are built for vasopressin bonding. And both sexes can do vasopressin bonding, but especially men. Men have more receptors for that vasopressin, and so you have more in their system. And that's spread across multiple mammal species, not even just humans. Vasopressin bonding, slight stress, is how you, as a man, can choose to bond more tightly with other people. Why would you want to do this? Well, number one, it makes you feel closer to people. Number two, it makes it feel easier to be patient with those people. It gives you more patience and more care for them because you don't feel disconnected from them. So if you are always yelling at your kids, forcibly vasopressin bonding yourself to them on purpose, cultivating that, I should say, cultivating a vasopressin bond with your children can help you in the long term because now you feel closer to them and vasopressin is closely related to protecting your loved ones. When those vasopressin bonds are hit, it makes you want to be protective and, and defensive over your family, even against yourself. If you're causing problems, you can vasopress and bond, and then you will start to calm down and see yourself as a problem to your child's health. Then you will feel more inclined to be patient, more inclined to be loving, more inclined to take the time to spend that time with your kid instead of coming home exhausted and being frustrated at how much noise they're making. Vasopressing bond Vasopressin bonds and doing that on purpose can change your life. They can change your relationships. That's why they got, it got so catchy to do team building exercises with corporations it was because they figured out vasopressin bonding. A little bit of stress makes men bond as long as you're solving a problem together. Stress, solve the stress together, bond. It tells your brain, this person is good for solving problems. I should keep them close. And I want to protect them. That is how men bond. So if you, as a man, are struggling, feeling disconnected from the people in your life that you should feel close to, if you're struggling with not feeling as connected to your wife, if you're struggling with not feeling as connected to your kids, 
if you're struggling with not feeling as connected to your friends or to anyone, even your own father. Introduce small amounts of stress and solve those stress things together. Team building exercises. Build them into your life all the time. Build them into good relationships too. Many times couples who say that the magic has gone out of their marriage, they still have oxytocin bonds, but they don't have vasopressin bonds. And they need to rekindle those. That's why having excitement, sometimes excitement in the bedroom, sometimes excitement in their life, introducing elements of stress and excitement makes them enjoy it and rekindles their love. It's vasopressin. That's what's doing it. If you are struggling, get out and build some vasopressin. Thank you.